Hey guys, and welcome back. You've been requesting a what I eat in a day video for about the last year, and you're always requesting more Vitamix videos as well. So today I thought we'd have a little fun and I'd show you what I eat in a day with a little help from my Vitamix. But before we dive into the food, I started my morning with a hike along the coast. And all the while, I was trying to pretend the promised land was there beyond the great divide. But I'll be coming, coming home soon. Yeah, I'll be coming, coming home soon. So take me out to California where the sun is always high, where the streets are paved with gold and no one ever gets old. Now, it should go without saying that I don't use my Vitamix for every meal of the day, as I'm showing you today, even though it's certainly possible, but I do use my Vitamix at least once a day for some type of meal, which is why I'm more than happy to partner with Vitamix on today's video. So after a big hike or workout like this morning, I'll usually whip up my post-workout green smoothie. It's a really flexible smoothie that's loaded with a variety of greens and nutrients, and it's perfect for replenishing your muscles. I'll start by adding a cup or so of water to my Vitamix and then assess what I have in my fridge. Today I've got baby spinach, so I'll add two large handfuls of that to my blender, along with half of a frozen banana, which for me is two pieces, as I always cut my bananas into quarters before placing in my stasher bag in the freezer. For healthy fat and to make the smoothie extra creamy, I'll add a quarter of an avocado. And this was a stubborn little avocado this morning as it was a bit underripe and I was overly anxious to use it. For a little extra sweetness, I'll usually add an apple or a pear. And since I had a few organic pears on hand, I'm adding one of those to the blender. Then I'll add a tablespoon of chia seeds, which is great for bone health. And you know I love my collagen peptides, so I'll add a scoop of those. But because collagen is not a complete protein, I do add a scoop of whey protein powder to get all of the essential amino acids. But you could use a dairy-free or vegan protein powder as well. On mornings where I have this post-workout green smoothie, I don't typically have anything else for breakfast as I find that this fills me up just fine. For a mid-morning snack after I've gotten ready for the day and done a bit of work, I'll grab a hard-boiled egg. If you've watched my hard-boiled egg video, you'll probably notice that this is about a nine-minute egg, which is perfect for snacking on. And I just peel these over the sink if I haven't already pre-peeled them and then sprinkle on a little sea salt. Now, I should also mention that I have quite low blood pressure, so my body is always craving salt, but you do what's best for you. I try to get the bulk of my work done in the morning as I'm definitely a morning person and most focused then. And for those of you who watched my recent Instagram stories, I'm absolutely loving my new stand-up desk. It's been a game changer for me considering how much time I spend on my computer editing photos and videos and just managing my website. I always strive to have greens form the bulk of two of my meals every day, but since it's summer and we've been having this crazy heat wave, you'll see that I'm pretty veggie heavy all day today. And that's because I just really don't feel like cooking. So for lunch, I'm gonna whip up a simple salad with a spring lettuce mix, cucumbers, cherry tomatoes, and red onion. And because I had spinach for breakfast, I'll always opt for a different green at lunch or dinner. Mm -hmm. 
In addition to the cucumber and cherry tomatoes, I'll also finely slice up some red onion and add that to my salad along with a sprinkle of goat cheese because I'm definitely a goat cheese lover. I meal prepped some herbed chicken a couple of days ago, so thankfully I don't have to do any cooking, and I'll add about a half of a chicken breast to my salad. This is the same chicken I show how to make in my meal prep number one video if you're interested. Now, if you watch my Instagram stories, you know that I just drizzle olive oil and balsamic on my salads about 90% of the time, but today I'm gonna blitz up a quick avocado dressing using these eight ounce containers for my Vitamix. So I'll scoop out that extra firm avocado, which wouldn't have been the best to eat on top of my salad anyway, and add it to the container along with a quarter cup of olive oil, a quarter cup of water, and the juice from one lime. Then I'll toss in a garlic clove and grab some fresh cilantro and parsley from my brand new patio herb garden, which I am super excited about. I'll add the herbs to the container along with a little salt and pepper and screw on the top, which is actually the base with the blade that will connect to our blender. And after 10 to 15 seconds, I have a super easy and delicious avocado dressing. Now, today's version is a bit thick and more of a cross between guacamole and avocado dressing, but all you have to do is thin it with a little bit more water to make it more pourable. Then I'll just put the leftovers of this dressing in the fridge for salads all week long. All right, the final finishing touch on my salad is a sprinkle of kale microgreens. And since it's a gorgeous 90 degrees outside today in Southern California, I'm gonna eat my salad on my patio and enjoy the view and fresh air. In the afternoon, I always need a little snack to munch on, so today I'm whipping up a new version of my hummus recipe. You guys have seen me make my regular hummus several times before, and this roasted red pepper version couldn't be any easier. In fact, the entire process is virtually the exact same, so I'll drain two cans of chickpeas over a bowl and then add those to my Vitamix. Then I'll add about a third cup of aquafaba, which is the leftover chickpea liquid to the container, and half a cup of tahini, which is toasted and ground sesame seeds. To that, I'll add a quarter cup of olive oil and the juice of two lemons, one clove of garlic, a teaspoon of cumin, and a half a teaspoon of sea salt. But to make this a roasted red pepper hummus, of course, we need some roasted red peppers. Now, you can easily roast red peppers on your stove or grill, but as I didn't want to set off the smoke detector in my apartment today, I'm opting for this can of organic peppers. You can add as many bell peppers as you'd like, and I'm adding about a cup's worth, as I really want that roasted red pepper flavor to come through. Then I'll add the tamper, turn it on, and in about 20 seconds, have plenty of hummus to snack on. I'm adding my hummus to a small bowl for snacking today and tomorrow, and then I'll put the rest in a storage container because left to my own devices, I could definitely polish off more than a few servings of this. And to scoop up the hummus, I'm just slicing up the other half of my cucumber. If you wanna get fancy, you could definitely sprinkle on some white and black sesame seeds and chop up some more bell pepper for the top as I show you how to do on my website. The rest of the hummus will go in one of my glass lock storage containers, and I'm using Vitamix's Underblade Scraper, which is an absolute must-have item for scraping down the insides of your container whenever you're making hummus or almond butter. It's like a squeegee for the inside and prevents you from wasting any of your delicious food. And that is my very tasty afternoon snack and snack for the rest of the week. Towards the end of the day, I usually have a calming herbal tea to help slow down my pace and relax my brain a little from all of my work. 
Usually it's a plain chamomile or a chamomile plus lavender blend like the one I have today. I've been making more of a concerted effort to get away from my desk throughout the day, which can be tougher than you'd think when you work from home, but I find that even staring out my window for 10 to 15 minutes definitely helps to relax my mind. For the last week, as I've been watching my herbs grow on my patio, I've been craving one of my favorite zucchini noodle recipes, which is my zucchini noodle caprese. Unfortunately, my basil isn't quite big enough to harvest yet, so I purchased some fresh basil at Whole Foods the other day, along with mini balls of mozzarella, and I've still got some leftover cherry tomatoes, which will be perfect for this recipe. Now, if you've ever made pesto at home, odds are you've used your food processor but as you'll see, it's just as easy in your Vitamix. So I'll add 2 thirds cup olive oil along with two teaspoons of lemon juice to my container. And I've also used up all of my fresh lemons I had on hand, but I've always got jars of organic lemon juice and lime juice in my fridge because you never know when you'll need it. You can use a variety of nuts when making pesto, but for my basil pesto, I like a combination of pine nuts and cashews and toasting them really brings out their flavor. So I'll add a quarter cup of each to a small fry pan and gently toast them for a couple of minutes. I'll add those to my Vitamix along with two packed cups of basil. And I don't know about you, but there's something about the smell of fresh basil that makes me think I should just hop on a plane to Italy. Then I'll add three cloves of garlic, some salt and pepper, and a quarter cup of fresh Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. You could definitely make this pesto dairy-free by leaving off the cheese and it's still enormously flavorful. But given that I've got balls of mozzarella in my dinner, I'm definitely not striving for a dairy-free recipe today. So once everything is in my Vitamix, I'll turn it on and blend until it's all chopped up, but still a little chunky. Now, because I'm just one person, I've always got leftovers, so I'll pour my basil pesto into one of my WEC jars so that I can continue enjoying it throughout the week, and then just take out as much as I need for tonight. All right, next I'm gonna quickly make some zoodles. My spiralizer definitely gets used a ton from June through September when it's hot outside, and I eat a lot of raw zucchini dishes. My big tip when it comes to zucchini noodles is to make sure that you use kitchen scissors to shorten the strands. Zucchini noodles can be several feet in length and that's quite a lot to have to slurp up. So it's best to shorten them a bit before mixing with your favorite sauce and serving them up. In terms of serving sizes, I'll usually spiralize one zucchini per person. So one is definitely plenty for me tonight and I'll just add two to three heaping spoonfuls of basil pesto and then use tongs to make sure that all of the zucchini noodles are nice and coated. Now, there are many things that I love about this recipe, but for an easy summer dish, it really can't be beat. There's no cooking involved, it's light and vegetarian, it's super flavorful, and the only work I have left to do is slice a handful of cherry tomatoes and balls of mozzarella in half. Once everything is in the bowl, I'll give it a good toss and then serve it up. Before serving, you could definitely add fresh basil for that little food styling flair. And while I didn't have enough basil in my herb garden to make that whole batch of pesto, I definitely have enough for a few leaves to garnish the top. And honestly, it makes me so happy to know that these little leaves came from my brand new herb garden. All right, now I wasn't planning on doing a dessert tonight, but given that it's so absolutely gorgeous on my patio today, I thought I'd whip up some very quick and easy mango frozen yogurt to enjoy as the sun sets. If you subscribe to my blog, you saw me make a strawberry version of this just a few weeks ago, but mangoes are one of my favorite fruits and I just purchased some frozen mango chunks, so I thought I might as well put them to good use. And since I don't have any jars of my homemade yogurt on hand, I'm using organic yogurt from the store, but you can easily make this recipe dairy-free with a cashew or almond milk-based yogurt as well. 
The proportions of this recipe are really easy to remember. It's just one cup of yogurt to one pound of frozen fruit. Then if you'd like to add a little sweetener like honey or maple syrup, you can do that as well. Once everything is in my Vitamix, I'll blend it for about 30 seconds for delicious, homemade and healthy mango frozen yogurt. As I'm sure you've guessed, I'm not gonna eat this whole batch tonight, so I'll pour it into one of my glass lock containers use a spoon to flatten it down, and then place it in the freezer. Now, you can freeze it for an hour or two if you like a firmer consistency, but I personally like it soft straight out of the blender, so I'll just take a few scoops for myself and then head out to my patio for sunset. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I eat in a day, and if you'd like to see more of these types of videos in the future, make sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let me know in the comments below. Oh, but I do have one last thing to show you.